Hey, we're going to go over some brief tips on using clear cure goo. To start out with, I wasn't enthused with this stuff when I first started tying. Then I got into the saltwater fly game, and over the last year, I I couldn't live without the stuff. Um, so here, let me let me try to share a few tips. One thing, uh, get yourself a stack of paper towels and cut cut yourself up some squares of paper towels because you're going to need to wipe this stuff up every once in a while. Get yourself some uh, container of alcohol-based hand cleaner. Uh, you can cl clean the tack off your fingers really easily. Uh, get yourself some micro brushes. They're very helpful. You don't, don't come in handy. Um, using a curing lamp. There are many curing lamps out on the market. This is the Pro, Light, Pro Plus Light. Uh, it's more powerful. Uh, the batteries cost a little bit more, but it gets the curing job done in less time. Well worth the investment. Um, oh yes, by the way, when you, you, you turn the lamp on, you turn it off, you put the lamp down, make sure the lamp is really off because I've had situations where I come back 10 seconds later, 15, 30 seconds later, and oops, the light was on. Don't do it. Um, oh, the other thing is, <laughs> when you're, when you have the, let's say I've got cure goo on these eyes and I want to cure them, don't leave your bottle right directly under where you're aiming your lamp. Because what you will do is you will seal, you will cure the goo uh, in in the nozzle, so don't do that. I, I, I've learned all these these things by mistake. Um, so have cure goo in a syringe head. Some people like that. Uh, they have nozzles. They also have brushes. Uh, if you use a nozzle, when you'll find when you start to press, it doesn't come out. Doesn't come out. Does and then it comes out real hard, and you have to back it off. Some people get so good with the syringe. That, that they're very comfortable using it. I wind up transferring my thick cure goo into a bottle, into a nozzle bottle for application. Uh, I've tried the applicator brush. And now this brings me to another topic, which is whether you use a nozzle or an applicator brush is what to do when your goo is about at this level. So think about it. If you've got a brush and it's full up to here, when you withdraw the brush, the whole thing is coated with the goo and you have to let it run off a little bit and then you, you wipe some on. But if it's down here, you have to dip the brush all the way in and then bring it out and get a little bit and you have to put the brush all the way in. With a nozzle, you have a similar issue. Uh, it's real convenient if this bottle's nearly full I turn it up and I start to squeeze and it flows right away if the bottle is nearly empty I turn it up I squeeze some air out I'm, I'm waiting for it to run down squeeze some air out waiting for it to run down squeeze some air out and then I'm then I'm getting my goo so what I do is I always work with a nearly full bottle and the only way to do that whether you use a brush or the nozzle is to have some extra goo and you just transfer it in so you're always working with a bottle that's nearly full. Um, accessory tips. Uh, these are, you can get a, a set of accessory tips uh, for application. Um, this, this represents several. I, I collect the darn parts. Every once in a while they'll get plugged up, they'll get hardened. Uh, they'll get so sticky you just want to throw them away. Accessory tips are a nice thing to use. Um, if this thing does get gummed up, you get a bodkin or you get a needle and you clear, clear it out. Now this one I'm going to be using later today. And You will have to work. There we go. We got the dam broken. Now sometimes you need to take this nozzle off and clear it from the back side if you if you have a hardened piece that is plugging up there. 
Uh, but this is where, uh, you know, if it's not flowing the way it's supposed to, get it cleaned up and you'll, you'll be much happier that way. Attaching eyes. Um, these eyes have pr principally a layer of cure goo from here down to the hook and from here down to the hook. Sometimes you will put a layer of goo all the way around the back and kind of make a helmet all the way around the front of the fly. When I watch other videos, people say, these are easy to put on. Maybe they are, and they're, they're easier for me, but this is after I've taken a long time doing it. Uh, and the goo will sink into your winging materials. Uh, it doesn't harden until you hit it with the lamp. But if you put some on and you don't want it to sink in all the way, go ahead and zap it and firm it up and, and then add more. Um, you can layer the goo. Um, now, which products are best? I use the thick. I use the tack-free. The tack-free is probably the most versatile. Um, and and it, it is, it is tack-free. It's not sticky. And of course, I use the hydro, which is it's it's a consistency of water. Uh, you touch it on; it sink. I use it all throughout the construction of my flies. It sinks into the materials. It cures like three seconds. Um, the the thick flex is really nice to use. The flexible, the tack-free flex, gives you a flexible um, cure goo. So if you give it a try and you're willing to struggle through the learning process like I have, I think you'll find I, I think you'll find it's very useful. I think you'll have fun with it. Thanks.